Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com, and this is your Photo News Fix. This Photo News Fix is brought to you by the Fronos Photo Audio Podcast. To check out all the different audio-only shows available, such as Raw Talk, Photo News Fix Extra, Pictures in Your Mind, and more, search Fronos Photo wherever podcasts are available, and please hit that subscribe button. Have you ever wondered what wedding photos look like in the late 19th century? One collector by the name of Frank Baresca has taken it upon himself to hunt down, collect, and share these vintage portraits at his gallery in New York City. But before I show you some of these images, let's talk about how and why wedding photos became en vogue. Vogue. Well, it turns out Queen Victoria and Prince Albert, which Dan, that probably does hurt, ah! decided 14 years after they got married in 1840 to get their wedding portrait taken as the technology of the day had advanced far enough. Quickly, and by quickly, I mean 30 years later, which is quick by 1880 standards, right? The trend of getting a wedding portrait hit the States. These lifeless, no smile, no touching, no emotion portraits are a look back at what wedding photography was in the late 19th century. Now, what I find cool about these photos are how crisp and clean they look. Sure, the couples aren't smiling and rarely even touch each other, but they are just cool. I also love how the borders of the images act as a billboard for the photographer, listing their business name, address, and more. It's basically a vintage watermark, which was a necessity back in the day. To check out all the images Maraska has shared, look for the link over on fronosphoto.com. The vastly popular photo hosting service Photobucket just broke billions of photos across the web, and some of their users are being whiny little babies about it. Are you crying? Starting back in 2003, Photobucket has allowed its users to upload and store their images for free on their servers. They now have 100 million users with over 10 billion images stored. Many users use the hot linking feature, which allows you to link photos on your website, but they're stored on someone else's servers, in this case, Photobuckets. The reasoning behind it is the user doesn't have to pay for the bandwidth and Photobucket was able to generate revenue from ads on the site. Well, as of June 26, with only one week notice, that has officially changed, leaving billions of images with broken links across the web. Now they're charging $399 a year for a subscription for those who want to hot link images from Photobucket servers and or restore linking to their old images across the web. This has left a lot of Photobucket users pissed off and I can understand why. One user by the name of Julia wrote on Twitter, you are a disgusting company, Photo Bucket. This is 100% blackmail. I have years of blog content on your platform, now forcing to pay $400 a year. Miss Virion writes on her Twitter, at Photo Bucket, hope you go out of business with this strategy. Not paying $400 ransom, I'll find someone else to host my pictures. Here's what I have to say. Send in the ambulance. Would you like some cheese with that wine? We'll go back down to McDonald's and get you a hamburger and some french fries. Guess who just called? Justin Timberlake. He says, Stop being self-righteous, entitled little babies. For a decade, you paid nothing for a service that saved you a ton of money at a time when hosting and bandwidth were much more expensive and you were too cheap to pay for your own storage. Could Photobucket have done a better job and given people more time and options? Sure, but what do you want them to do? Foot the bill when they're probably not making the same ad revenue they once were? This idea that you will simply go somewhere else to store your images for free is flawed as well. Those free services are going to have to start doing the same thing one day. I've used Flickr to store and hotlink my images for years, and I know one day they too will shut down and those images will no longer be available on my posts. You simply need to find a solution to share your images, and that's most likely Facebook. I kid, or do I? Actually, it's on your own server at your own expense. This is business, suck it up, you whiny babies. And finally, a whole bunch of drone news all squeezed into one. One story. Back in May, I shared with you a story where the U.S. Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia Circuit shot down the FAA for requiring drone owners to register their drones. Well, it's now official. You not only don't need to register your drones anymore, but if you already did, you can request a refund as well as be removed from the drone registry. The FAA's website states, if you are an owner operating exclusively in compliance with Section 336 and you wish to delete your registration and receive a refund of your registration fee, you may do so by accessing a registration deletion and self-certification form, a PDF, and mailing it to the FAA at the address designated on the form. 
However, the FAA continues to encourage voluntary registration for all owners of small unmanned aircraft. Now, Dan, I wonder, are they still charging five bucks or not? But I doubt people will actually take the time to do that. I'm personally not going to take the time to print and mail a form in to get five dollars back. I'm staying registered. This all leads to the next part of drone news, where the FAA is working on a remote identification system for consumer drones. With more and more consumer drones being sold and larger players like Amazon, Intel, Qualcomm, and even police departments getting involved, some sort of system is needed. Yep just like South Park predicted. The issue currently is that even if you place a small registration number on your drone, no one would be able to read it when the drone is in the air. On top of that, if you crash your drone without a registration number, it's almost impossible to track down the owner unless you're standing in front of your address waving, this is my drone, come to this address if I crash it. Just last week, a man was arrested in Arizona for flying his drone over a forest fire, causing the grounding of planes that were meant to support firefighters on the ground that now had to stop fighting the fire. Fire. The FAA is looking to add some sort of chip to drones that will allow them to be identified from the air and possibly restrict them from flying in certain airspace. I think over the next few years, we're going to see more and more laws put into place regarding consumer drones to help stop the random assholes <laughs> from ruining it for everyone. What do you guys think? And there you have it. That's your photo news fix this time around. Don't forget to subscribe to the Frono's Photo Podcast to check out the photo news fix extra and all of the other audio podcast. To check out the last photo news fix, go ahead and click right here on the screen. And that's where I'll leave it. Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. See ya.